Okay, so this is my first real Raspberry Pico project. Now obviously I've already made it, so we're going to have to make it disappear so you can see how I've made it. Okay, so I'm going to narrate over this build and I'm going to speed it up considerably. So the first thing I'm doing is sticking the plan to the wood and then because I'm cutting out two lots, I've roughly cut around it and then I've nailed the two bits together. Now I'm using my scroll saw to go around as close as possible to the line. Once I've cut that out, I then use my belt sander to tidy up the edges and just to get the bits I can't reach with a belt sander, I use a little drum in my uh, pedestal drill. Now I'm drilling the holes, I'm piloting them all 3mm and then I've gone through to 6 Now what I've done is I've separated the two bits of wood and I'm drilling um, Firstly 10mm for the pots and now 20mm hole saw for the uh, ping pong balls. Okay so I've cut the two bits of wood out, the one with the big holes is for the ping pong balls and this one has the variable resistors in which I've already mounted. You can see that if I cover my face, there you go. Um, the little holes are to allow me to space the two together using little spacers, I'll zoom in in a minute, you can see what I mean, but before I stick the ping pong balls down, what I've done is I've put the little screws in here otherwise I'll really struggle to get the screws in once the ping pong balls are in place. So I can actually just screw those temporarily on just to make sure they don't fall out. Okay so I've zoomed in here, you can see the uh, ping pong balls are in place underneath the wood and uh, there's two things to note here. The first is I'm doing it on a piece of uh, paper that way I don't uh, make the uh, ping pong balls dirty and also they'll put a little cross here and that just uh, aligns the ping pong balls so that the seam is approximately horizontal. Um, you want to avoid having the seam go so it goes through the LED at the front. So the next thing to do is just glue them, nothing fancy. Okay, so that's a nice bead of uh, hot glue around those and I'll just let that uh, harden before I uh, do anything else. Okay, so the glue has now gone hard and it's now time to uh, mount the LEDs. Uh, but before I actually uh, put them in, what I find it's best is just to um, scuff up the uh, surface of the um, LED just to diffuse the light a bit and I've got this uh, scratch pad to do that. Okay, so I'm ready to uh, Put a hole in these ping pong balls and the easiest way to do that is with a soldering iron. That's not in focus. But hopefully it'll be in focus as I do the first one. I've lowered the temperature down to about 260 so it doesn't go really quick. And basically in and out and uh, that is approximately the correct size. Um, also because it doesn't make any debris you shouldn't find any dust on the inside. So with the uh, wiring on the uh, potentiometers or variable resistors, call them what you want. I'm going to make all the um, positive and negative terminals common, that way it tidies up the wires. So I've got these little links which will go for the blacks and instead of doing red I'm actually going to use orange for the power. So I just need to tin all the wires first and that will help me out no end. Okay, so that's all the negative wires done. Let's do all the positive. Okay, so that's the power. So for these three wires, I'm actually going to put them sideways, otherwise they'll uh, interfere with the posts that go through the board. Normally do that, but I think that's the best way. So 
So I'm now going to move on to the uh, LEDs and uh, like the uh, resistors or variable resistors I'm going to common up all the uh, grounds first. That way it should make a nice neat wiring job. Okay so I didn't record the uh, attaching of the wires. There's nothing really special to say. On the outside one you're going to have one red, green and a blue and then on the inside you've got all of them connected. It's always worth saying with LEDs you uh, want to solder quickly. If you dwell too long you can actually uh, damage the LED. So I've finished all the wiring and connected the two halves together. You should be able to see there's little spaces in there. And the wiring comes out with a hole in the middle. I've got one side which is for the LEDs and the other side for the variable resistors. Okay so we're nearly done but whatever you do don't forget to put the resistors in. Okay bear with me. Okay so I've done really well. I've made all the connections to the Pico. I'm saying Pico, is it Pico or is it Pico? Don't really know. Um, so now it's time to get programming. So I'm going to put on the screen recorder so you can see what I have to do. Okay so let's open Thonny. And we can see the message at the bottom that has connected so let's get straight into writing. Firstly we need to import machine. Then we're going to uh, define our first LED. So that will be LED red and we say that is machine dot pulse width modulation p w m and we're going to assign that to machine dot pin 18. Next we need to uh, give the pulse width modulation a frequency so led red dot f r e q for frequency and we're going to have a thousand. Next we'll move on to the pot so we're going to call that pot red and that is going to equal machine dot adc analog to digital conversion and we're going to say 27 for the pin on that one. Now we're on to the main program so while true led red dot duty oops okay right duty underscore u16. Now that seems a bit strange. They're uh, assigning the duty a 16-bit number. From what I can tell it only needs to be a 10-bit number. But there you go. Um, and then we're going to assign it the value of the pot red. And that again is a 16-bit number which again is a bit unusual because uh, the analog to digital read is only a 12-bit number. That, however, should be it. So we'll save that, save it to the Pico, and we'll save it as a test. Top PY. Okay, so this should be the first red LED. And as you can see, that fades nicely up and down. So now all I need to do is to um, replicate that program code for the other LEDs. Okay, so we have finished it, and the program's all loaded up. But does it work? Well, let me show you. This is the green going up. I'm increasing the uh, potentiometer very slowly and it's increasing in brightness as we go. And that's maximum. Brilliant. Everything works well. Let's just show you the red though. So again, I'm increasing it, increasing it, increasing it, and right at the very top, one of them goes off. Which is a bit weird. And then you can see I've reduced it a bit and now it's flashing on and off. So that's a bit random. And then the blue does a similar thing. It's brighter, 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 and just as it approaches the top, it goes off. And there it is flickering on and off, and then let's reduce it down to zero again. So that's the first thing that's a bit weird. The second thing that's a bit weird, I don't know if you'll be able to see without zooming in. So I'll just zoom in. Okay, I don't know if you can actually see it. Yeah, I think you can see the blue more than the green. Just here, you can see a hint of blue. In fact, the LEDs are not actually 100% off. There's still a little pulse getting to them, which is a bit weird. So there's two little problems there which I need to have a look at. Okay, so here's the full program listing. Um, I've been a bit lazy, I've done a lot of cut and pasting, um, but it's a simple program, so it should work. Uh, it's quite disappointing that it doesn't. So uh, I've tidied it up in the next program. And in this one, what I've done, 
uh, different to the original one. Uh, you can see here I've um, read each pot twice and then put every LED on a separate pulse width modulation pin. In the second program I've uh, chosen the sister pulse width modulation pin. For example, uh, on GP16, this one here, the green, that is also available on pin 0. So I've done that and what that's meant is I only have to read the uh, variable resistors once. And that has now resolved the problem of the LEDs going out at full range. However, they are still on very dimly. So I'm now going to have to try to do a little routine or add another function to see if I can read what these analog values are doing. Okay, so this is the next program I've done and here you can see I've uh, done a little function and this is the function that's going to read the uh, analog values from the pulse. Uh, I've called it read voltage, um, it's actually bits it's reading and it's a 16 bit number as I explained earlier. Uh, but what that allows me to do is also print the voltage that it's reading. Now at the moment all of the variable resistors are at the minimum value but you can see here that the returning value is in the 300s so there really is quite a good pulse still going to those LEDs. And part of the reason this value is so big is because um, an analog read is not actually a 16 bit value it's only a 12 bit value. Now I can actually show you what the true analog value reading is at this uh, supposedly zero voltage. If I put voltage is equal to voltage, that will do a file rotation by 4 and that will reduce the value from a 16 bit number to a 12 bit number. Stop it first. Right, let's try that again. So there you go. Uh, if I pause that, you'll see it's hovering around 22, 23, 24. So there is a zero offset. Okay, so I'm now going to go to the official Raspberry Pi Pico data sheet. And if you uh, just scroll down, uh, you need to go to page 18. Uh, here we can see it uh, goes through the analog to digital conversion and it does actually explain that there is an inherent offset and it says it's approximately 30 millivolts. Well in my case I've got, well if you take the 3.3 volts of the supply voltage and then divide it by 4096 which is the 12 bits um, and then times it by the 25 bits I'm showing that actually gives me an offset of about 20 millivolts. So that is why I'm getting this little um, glowing LED when it should actually be zero. Now there was another thing I wanted to try um, to see if it made a difference. So it actually says in the uh, Getting Started with MicroPython on Raspberry Pi book that you can um, use the command just duty. And from what I can see in the book, that uh, should allow you to uh, define a value of between 0 and 1024, which is a 10-bit number. Um, however, when you run that, it doesn't like the word duty. So I'm just going to show you something here. If you come down to the uh, bottom and write import sys, um, you can then check out what the functions are. So that is what the keywords are for machine and then you can delve a bit deeper and see what the keywords are for that one. And as you can see there, duty underscore u16 is available but the word duty is not. So it looks like there's a little error in the book as well. And it's interesting that the book um, I've actually received an email already saying the book has actually been recalled. Um, so yeah, not particularly good, but there you go. Okay, so returning to my program, you can see I've uh, reduced the uh, voltage bits by uh, 500, and that's got rid of this offset. 
but obviously that's going to result in uh, quite a few negative numbers so I've just done this if statement to uh, return them to zero if they go below zero and that has resolved all of my problems. Okay so I've had a little play with the program and it's now working correctly and I've uh, found out why it wasn't working correctly which is always useful. So just to show you how it works you just add a little bit of red then maybe add a bit of uh, blue and you get a nice pink and then add a bit of green and you get it white first and then you get a pale green and then you just basically play with the colours and see what they combine to make. So that's my little first Pico or Pico project. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.